Lisa Fulmer is the marketing manager for CNT Publishing, maker of how-to books and products for quilting, fiber arts, and mixed media. Lisa is the owner of Lisa Liza Lou Designs, selling her own work and a variety of unique art and craft supplies online and at shows. And she's one of the coolest party girls at the Pajama Party live event right here on the Cool to Craft channel on Wednesday nights. Make a note of that. We'll talk about that in just a little while. Today, Lisa is going to share shortcuts to making the coolest Dresden plate quilt block. Hi, Lisa. Hello, everybody. I've got my camera at a weird angle right now because I'm going to um, use my sewing machine. Um, I want to start off by first clicking my 10-minute timer. Boom. <laughs> and um, first, I want to tell you that I do not profess to be a quilter or even a very good sewer. What I am really good at is figuring out shortcuts, <laughs> because if I can't um, finish a project in one or two sittings, it probably won't get done. I'm just, I'm a real kind of a short project girl. So this is uh, the beginning of a wall hanging um, that I'm going to make, and it is a very loose take on a Dresden quilt, but what, a uh, quilt block, but what I'm doing is I'm using a Dresden template. That's what I'm going to show you. So um, this is where I'm at with it right here. And Tiffany, if you want to throw up my close-up picture, I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeVille. I'm going to um, show you how to use this template and then show you just how I deal with the stitching and, and the piecing. Um, because I like, thanks, Tiffany, because I like shortcuts so much, um, I, I, that's probably why I'm not a very good quilter. <laughs> Um, so I, I really found out that I like machine applique with a raw edge, and that's what you're seeing there um, is this raw raw edge um, applique. That's what we're going to look at. So um, what I found was that I had a whole bunch of beautiful batik fabric. Like I, you know, fabric is just like candy, and I was collecting a lot of batiks at different shows I went to, and I realized I had quite a little rainbow. So I thought they would look really striking against a black background. And I was trying to figure out what shapes um, to work with. And I decided I really wanted to work with a, a large sun shape. And that's where the Dresden plate came in. Traditional Dresden plates um, usually have tops. They're usually a needle turned applique. Um, they can be a variety of sizes. And a little later when I'm done, I will post a link to a YouTube video on the CNT um, uh, YouTube channel that shows you exactly how to use this template to make a traditional Dresden plate block. But this is the template that I'm going to be working with. It's called Fast to Cut, and it's kind of uh, triangular shaped. It's got a lot of lines in it so that you can trace um, different size blade patterns. Each part of a Dresden plate block is called a blade, and so you can make them different um, sizes depending on what size you want your total um, block to be. And so um, then there's different types of styles for the tops. I decided to go with a flat top just because I kind of like the modern look. The other um, thing that I like about shortcut quilting is that I like working on a foundation. And so by working on a black piece of fabric, I can just very easily create a collage, really, um, and stitch it down. And I'll um, talk more about that in half a second. So let me show you how to use this template. I've got my fabric here. And... Um, I decided that uh, I actually, what you can do with a rotary cutter, you can fold your fabric over multiple times. For those of you who work with fabric, this is probably a no-brainer for you. But for some of you who may not have worked with a rotary cutter, um, this particular style has two settings, one for light duty and one for heavy duty. So because I'm going to be cutting through, I've got four layers of fabric here, I can cut four blades at one time. And it's really um, easy peasy, so I'm just going to line up my blades. Um, and normally I would flip it back and forth, back and forth because of the shape so that I didn't waste any fabric. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to go straight. So you're just running your rotary cutter right against your blade on one side. And then I'm going to pretend to be left-handed and run it right or next, along the second side. But if you're not left-handed, you can just flip it around. And if you get a little, um, little nick in your blade right there, that happens every once in a while. And then because I've got it folded... I just need to take a little snip right here, and now I've got four 
perfectly cut, perfectly shaped blade. Um, so it's just that easy to work with the template. And then all I do, I'm going to set this aside, all I do for laying it out is I lay my black fabric out and I just start positioning it. And this is kind of similar to the old tile quilts. Um, CNT has a book about tile quilting too where you start with a background and you leave a little space in between that's kind of like grout <laughs> and you place your pieces and then you applique them on. And so really it's just that easy to start, um, you know, to assemble it. When you like how it looks, there's a couple different things you can do. You can pin it. Um, I use a glue stick. I'm not afraid to admit it. <laughs> so all I do is just take a little glue stick in a couple of spots and get the fabric right down where I want it. And then I can run it through the um, sewing machine. So I'll do that really quick. I have about five minutes. So bear with me a second. I'm going to shift my camera right over to there. Look at my old singer. This old machine has served me so well. Who needs big fancy bells and whistles? Who needs a machine that costs as much as a car, right? <laughs> um, that would be me. I do. I do. So it's really super simple. Uh, I'm going to start actually from the inside of a blade. Bear with me a second while I shift this into place. Working with black um, uh, thread because I like the contrast against all of the different colors in my um, wheel or my plate. And um, so I'm just going to set my set my needle down right there where I want it to be, and I'm kind of just looking there we go and what I'm once I get it in the corner then I'm just going to raise my foot and stitch and when I get to the where I like it to the end I'm going to raise my foot pivot it around leave the needle in the fabric so you keep it in place and stitch a nice straight line and what's great about the glue stick is it really does keep the fabric in place a little easier than pins do and so it's just that easy. And by the time I'm done, when I get to the edge, I can do a quick little half stitch if I need to by um, having the needle up and then just very slowly lifting my thing and my thing. See, I don't even know the right terms. That's how good a sewer I am. And uh, moving it just exactly where I want it to be so that I get just the right location. Um, and then I'll just maybe do a backward stitch for just one or two to anchor it, and that's it. And then I will have this beautiful fabric collage when I'm done. And um, it will, I'll probably fill the center of it with buttons, and I may or may not decide to quilt it. Um, I just think it's really cool, and I really like the rough edges of the fabric with um, raw edge applique. But what I've done in the past is, uh, because I'm not going to be using this as a real quilt, it's going to be a wall hanging, it's not going to get a lot of handling, so I'm not worried about the fraying. Of course, you can do a zigzag or a, a scalloped or a kinked edge. But I've also actually brushed a little bit of clear medium on my edges in the past to keep them from fraying. But I actually really like the fray look. I think it adds a lot of texture and character. And um, that's the other thing I like about the cheeks, too, is that it just, I don't know, it just doesn't need to be perfect. I just love it.